Good evening. Welcome to the Raymond Select Board meeting for Tuesday night, the 5th of April, 2016. Um, I'm going to take stuff out of order right away and move the minutes to after the public hearing. Um, we have two public hearings tonight. Um, so can I have a motion to go into a public hearing? So moved. Second. Uh, public hearing is open for the application for the malt liquor license renewal for William Coppersmith Jr. doing business as Fisherman's Catch, 1270 Roosevelt Trail. Is there someone here to speak to the inspection? Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Bruce Duffin, Fire Rescue Chief from Town of Raymond. Um, a property has been inspected. Uh, the one issue we're working on with Mr. Cobb Smith is the box box uh, system for the other side of the building. Uh, he's been working with us cooperatively and uh, we have general issues to report to the building. Thank you, Chief. Um, We've had no complaints lodged in the past year of any kind um, with the town against the Fisherman's Catch regarding their operations. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none, close the public hearing. Make a motion to approve the Walt Licka license for Fisherman's Catch. Second. All those in favor? Approved. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Short, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the snow season. And you'll be opening May ish? Uh, May 7th, I believe it is. May 7th ish? Yeah. All right. Yeah, right before Mother's Day. Great. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Um, our next public hearing is the annual town meeting land use ordinance changes. I have a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Um, at our last select board meeting, we had a number of, um, or workshop slash select board meeting, we had a number of changes proposed from the planning board. Um, they all come in recommended from the planning board. Um, and so we are going to open it up for a quick review of the changes and what's proposed. Um, because we've gone into the detail, if you could just highlight what each of the um, articles would be, um, if you have them there. If not, I have them. So, um, I, I was going to reference them by item in here, just to make it easier, because I don't know exactly where they'll be in the warrant. Is that correct? Well, I've given them the warrant. Oh, all right. Okay, so this works. But it's not your warrant. Okay, so I'm still going to refer reference them by item. Um, we'll start with item two. Um, item two focuses on the shoreland zoning ordinance. Um, and the key changes, I'll just go through those if that's Do you have the, the written article as proposed? Yeah. It was in, Do you have it's in the back. The, there's a draft <coughs> in the back. Do you have a copy? All right. So, yeah, that's what they're doing. Right. So, okay. yes. Can you, if you can go through that and please read the full article as it would appear on our warrant. And then you can do, give a quick <coughs> description of it if you can. So we have it as Article 2. Um, right. I can give you this if you would like to help you find your place. Yeah, my copy's, a, my copy's a little. I get it. Page 90. Yep, I got it. Okay. You got it? Yep. So Article 2 shall Section 12, nonconformance, Section 13. Establishment of Shoreland Zoning Districts, Section 15, Land Use Standards, Section 16, Administration, Section 17, Definitions of the Shoreland Zoning Provisions of the Town of Raymond, as adopted May 21st, 1994, and amended through June 3rd, 2015, be further amended by adding the underscored language and deleting the strike through type as shown. Good. Now you do your description. Okay. Now descriptions. Um, revised definitions and updates to formatting and definitions. Changes in the calculation methods used to. I'm going to go back to this because I can't read my it's copy. Okay. <laughs> I'll read the next one for you. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so changes in the calculation methods used to assess expansion of non-conforming structures, adjustments in culvert sizing, changes to language outlining the requirements associated with clearing and revegetation requirements and removal of hazard, storm damaged and dead trees, and new and revised definitions. So this is not the, the font we're going to use as you can <laughs> warrant, is it? Because it's hard to read. Yeah, it is hard to read. It's, yeah. it's blurred. <coughs> it kind of all meshes together. So, so you may want to pick I'll, a new font. So I'll, I'll play with that because on the, on the screen and what I printed looked fine. Yeah. So this no. Is a this is the first I've heard. It could be what, however it was printed. I, I think yeah, it might just be the printout of it. Mm -hmm. Try and pick a, a yeah, like so an well, aerial. I, I used aerial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. It, I it wow. printed as a simple text. I used that one on the <laughs> when you see it, it printed as a simple text. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's I not definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you, yeah. Yeah. I'll play with the <laughs> Mr. Chair, are you going to allow public comment after each article? Yes. And then we can make a motion as we go through it? Yes. Okay. Any questions on Article 2 as presented? It has been put forth to the Planning Board. They have reviewed the changes, sent them to the Select Board. Any comments from the public? Seeing none. Second motion to accept Article 2 as drafted. Second. With a recommendation? Yes. yes. All those in favor? Thank you. Article 3. I'm looking forward to. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's oh, page 119. 30. Oh, ours is page. Oh, sorry. I'm looking yeah. at that one. There it is. Yeah, go on it. Article 3. All right, Article 3, shall Articles 9X1, Stormwater Quality and Phosphorus Control Applicability, 9X2, Application Review, 9X2A, Point System of the Raymond Land Use Ordinance as adopted May 21st, 1994 and amended through June 3rd, 2015, be further amended by adding the underscored language and deleting the language in strike, strike through text as shown below. Um, key changes include revised definition and updates to formatting of definitions. Revisions to language restated yeah. level of staff reviews. And that's the first key change. If you're reading yeah, the changes underneath, Joe. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's the one. one that says has the big D right through it. <coughs> mm. Yeah, but this one doesn't have the key changes. Not okay. the other one. Okay. It just says prescription. Revisions to language related to the level of staff review. Language referencing best management practices guidelines has been added to the ordinance. Additional language related to stormwater calculations and techniques has been added to satisfy stormwater and phosphorus management control permit point system requires a professional engineer in, in, to certify that a proposed alternative treatment meets the performance standards of those techniques identified in the ordinance. Anybody here to speak on Article 3? Seeing none, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt Article 3 with the recommendation Second. Of the selectmen. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 4. 124. Yep. Article 4. Shall Article 12, applicability and definition of terms used in this ordinance of the Raymond Land Use Ordinance in Section 17 definitions of the shoreland zoning provisions be further amended by adding the underscored language and deleting the language in strike, strike through type as shown below. The key changes here are definitions for driveway and driveway entrance have been amended to provide a clearer understanding of both of terms related to parking uses. Anybody here from the public want to speak on Article 4? 
Seeing none, is there a motion? So move. Second. You've got to be a little more descriptive if you could move for me. Move that we adopt or accept uh, Article 4. And recommend? And recommend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Article 5. 125, page 125. Page 125. Shall Section 16G Administration Appeals of the Shoreland Zoning Provisions as adopted May 21, 1994 and amended through June 3, 2015 and Article 6 Board of Appeals of the Land Use Ordinance be further amended by adding the underscored language and deleting the language in strike through type as shown below. These amendments state that decisions of the Planning Board will not be reviewed by the Board of Appeals but rather go to the Superior Court. The Board of Appeals shall review a decision of the Code Enforcement Officer in, in a de novo hearing and amends the period for appeals to Superior Court to 45 days consistent with state statute. Any members of the public here to speak on Article 5? <coughs> Sorry to slow things down, Ryan Walker, uh, Queens Road. Um, this is just a question. I'm reading this for the first time. Getting up. Does this mean that the Board of Appeals is being removed from this? So any appeals <coughs> process is now a state controlled process versus a local town controlled process? Stephanie, can it, you can you put that in good words? I, I can try. It, it, it actually changes it so that appeals go straight to Superior Court. Currently, they go to the, the um, Board of Appeals to review, and then in general, in most cases, they then go to Superior Court anyway. So the idea here is to um, save the applicant one of those steps. It's typically done in most of the communities that we work with now that that system is in place. Thank you. It's so that one board doesn't question the uh, process of another town board. I think that's the biggest reason was one board reviewing another board as opposed to, you know, the, a, a, a independent hand. Don? Of course, I suppose arguably, too, you have the, the board with the greater, you know, breadth of knowledge and, and familiarity being reviewed by a board that has a lesser familiarity just by virtue of the fact that they're not dealing with that on a regular basis. So. And of course, typically towns try to uphold the decisions of their of, of their boards mm -hmm. that have their respective authorities in the areas in which they're charged with um, administering town town ordinance and policy. So, so it's kind of it kind of messes things up a little bit that way. Sorry. Did I make that worse? I hope not. No, no, that's good. No, that's good. Just, just a follow-up question. The follow-up question is: This is only for shoreland zoning, but otherwise, the board of appeals would would have that regular relationship of being in an appeals function, or what is then the role of the Board of Appeals? The role of the Board of Appeals is to deal with variances to the um, land use ordinance, um, okay. and this does apply to any appeal of, of a decision. Yeah, it's not okay. strictly to the, the shoreland zoning ordinance. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Any other comments from the public on Article 5? Is there a motion? Make a motion to adopt Article 5 with a recommendation to accept by the selectmen. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Article 6, page 134. Article 6, shall locations throughout the land use ordinance, subdivision regulations, and the fire ordinance where fees are identified be changed to read as found in the Town of Raymond Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals fee schedule. Additionally, shall the, fields, shall the Fees and Penalties Ordinance adopted October 1986 and amended through no, June 3, 2015 be further amended by adding the underscored language and deleting the language in strike through type as shown below. Key change here is changes in ordinance language replace specific fee language with reference to a fee schedule. Any members of the public want to, <coughs> excuse me, any members of the public want to speak on Article 6? Seeing none, is there a motion? Thank you, motion. We adopt Article 6 with a recommendation from the Second. All those in favor? 
Opposed? It's unanimous. Article 7, page 135. Article 7, shall the land use ordinance Article 9, Section Q, lot coverage, and Article 12, definitions, be amended by adding the underscored language and deleting the language in strike through type as shown below. The language is amended from lot coverage to lot structural coverage to better describe the intent of the term, which is to describe a portion of a lot actually covered by structures. Key changes here are changing the definition from lot coverage to lot structural coverage. Any members of the public like to speak on Article 7 this evening? Seeing none, is there a motion? I make a motion to adopt Article 7 and a recommendation by the Board of Selectmen. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous, 4 0. Article 8. Page 135. Eight. Shall the fire protection ordinance of the town of Raymond mis under miscellaneous ordinances be amended by adding underscored language and deleting the language in strike through type as shown below. And the key changes here are amendments to fees, code references, and general reformatting of the ordinance, new criteria requiring a review of fire alarm system installation or alteration, and the requirement of smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors with the installation of any solid fuel burning device. Any members of the public like to speak on Article 8 this evening? Seeing none, is there a motion? Make a motion to adopt Article 8 with a recommendation by the Board of Selectmen. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous 4 0. I believe that concludes the articles that have been recommended by the Planning Board for this public hearing. Um, I have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Stephanie, thank you very much for coming thank all this way me. and, and sure, being here to answer questions. <coughs> sure. and, and for your ability to read that typeface, which I hope <laughs> no, I'm I not did that. called I didn't on need to my do. glasses either. <laughs> very good. Very good job. Good. You, you got out of here, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good to see you anyway. <laughs> so those articles will now move forward to um, the annual town meeting for approval by the the town the town body. Thank you. I'm going to go back to item two on tonight's agenda: meeting uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Motion to approve the minutes of March eighth. Second. Any suggestions, deletions, corrections? Seeing none. All those in favor? Unanimous 4 0. Motion to approve the minutes of March 29th. Second. Any comments, suggestions, changes? Seeing none, all those in favor? 4 0. Next item on the agenda is under new business consideration and review of. FY 1617 budget and approval of 2016 annual town meeting warrant. In our packet this evening, we were given the warrant based on our previous budget meetings and the direction that we gave staff to any changes in the proposed budget. Um, what I'd like to do this evening is read the article. Um, as it would be printed in the uh, town warrant. And we would make a, a recommendation to approve the article as is, or if there are changes to numbers, we would, we would have a discussion at that time. We would also make a recommendation um, on the article itself after we've, we've agreed upon a number. Um, I do not expect to take public comment during this part of the process this evening. Um, I will um, I will allow select board members to ask anybody who's here further questions if they have them if you're here for a particular budget item because um, we have had a couple of budget meetings and also a, a budget workshop 
to get to this point. So that's how I'd like to handle this. Um, Sue, are you good with just starting right at Article 9 and continuing straight through what was printed for us? Would you like to read it? Would you like to read it? I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, I, I'm going to read each article, or somebody's going to read it into the record. Yeah, so I've got that ready in one minute. <laughs> All right. Article 9, to see if the town will vote pursuant to 23 MRSA subsection uh oh, 2953, is that correct, Sue? Can you see that? 2953, that orders of the municipal officers with respect to the closing of roads to winter maintenance shall be a final determination. Is this a new article? It's in there every year. Every year, okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's yeah. It depends on how you define new. It's, it's newer than, than many of them, which have been in there 100 years, so. It's newer than that. Okay. A couple of years, I think, a few years. Is there a motion? Motion to approve Article 9. With a recommendation? With a recommendation of selectmen, sorry. Any seconds? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 4 0. Passes as. So, Sue, I'm looking to see if I can read this better on my computer. Otherwise, I may mm -hmm. have you read them. I can. And you have a microphone? Yes. Um, you can actually read it better on your screen. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying to get to mm -hmm. here. It's on page 140. Uh, yep. Almost there. Well, I wonder if next year maybe I should put all these boilerplate-ish ones in one section. No, we got to do them. I would you prefer do, to do them. Well, to do the I prefer, prefer to do them in order. Okay. So I'm going to guess that stuff got blurry in conversion to PDF, and then it was printed from the PDF. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because even on screen, it's the same. The same blur lines are in the PDF on screen as there are here, but I can make it much bigger. So mm -hmm. it looks yeah. like it's photocopied on screen. It so does, right? doesn't yeah. it? Well, actually, I think it's it's you use bold type. That may also. have been what what made That's it muddy. Ooh. No. The article, yeah. article and the number is bold, but the rest of the text is not. It okay. all looks the same. It all looks bold. Yeah, so some, something happened in the mm. conversion, but we'll mm -hmm. get that fixed before yes. we print. Definitely. So would you like me to read them? Yes, why don't you read them, because it's still not great. Go ahead. Okay. Article Maybe. 10, please. Let me make it just a smidge bigger. Okay, Article 10, to see if the town will vote to authorize the selectmen on behalf of the town to sell and dispose of any property acquired by the town for non-payment of taxes pursuant to the policy adopted by the selectmen as may be amended from time to time, the policy to remain consistent with state statute and laws, in all cases conveyance to be made by municipal <coughs> quick claim deed. Make a motion that the selectmen uh, recommend Article 10 Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Article 11, to see what date taxes will be due and set, and to set an interest rate for unpaid amounts. And what's been recommended in the past is the selectmen recommend first half to be due October 31st, 2016, and second half to be due April 30th, 2017, with interest rate at 7% on any unpaid balances. Make a motion to recommend Article 11 by the Board of Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 12, to see if the town will vote to set the interest rate to be paid by the town on abated taxes at 7% for the fiscal year. Motion to accept Article 12 is recommended by the Selectmen. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? <coughs> Article 13, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to dispose of town-owned personal property with value not to exceed $35,000. Motion to accept Article 13 as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Article, four, article 14, 
to see if the town will vote to authorize the selectmen to borrow from or appropriate from undesignated fund balance surplus as they deem advisable to meet the unanticipated needs of the community that occurred during the fiscal year with amount not to exceed $75,000. Motion to accept Article 14 is recommended by the selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. And occasionally I need to scroll. Article 15, to see if the town will authorize the selectmen for the fiscal year 2016-2017 to transfer funds between appropriation accounts as long as the grand total of all appropriations is not exceeded. Any such transfers to be approved only at a properly called public meeting of the selectmen. Motion to accept Article 15 <coughs> as recommended by the selectmen. Second. All those in favor? <clears throat> Article 16, to see if the town will vote to authorize to the use of town employees and or town owned equipment or independent contractors hired by the town for maintenance on private roads in special and certain circumstances where the public's, where in the public's interest. Note of explanation, these three, exa no I'm sorry, three examples of when the use of town employees and equipment may be necessary. A, tying in work done on a public road that intersects a private road. B, plowing snow on a private road to clear the way for emergency response apparatus. And C, in rare or emergency situations, maintaining private roads for school bus access to special education students as deemed necessary. Motion to accept Article 16 as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 4-0. Article 17, to see if the town will vote to authorize the tax collector or treasurer to accept prepayments of taxes not yet committed pursuant to 36 MRSA sec, uh, section 506. Motion to accept Article 17 is recommended by the selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Article 18, to see if the town will vote to appropriate $200,968 from the tax increment of <coughs> Pipeline Art Route 302 Tax Increment Financing District for fiscal year 2016-2017 projects proposed in the Tax Increment Financing District Development Plan. Note, included in this item are Raymond Casco Historical Society for $1,800, RWPA Milfoil Program for $20,000, GP COG Annual Dues for $4,436. Motion to accept Article 18 as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. This is the article that has the Lake Region bus in it, I believe. So I'm going to bring that up before I ask if there's any discussion, because I believe there's going to be discussion. Um, I'm looking for the, it does have the, bus in it. the amounts. Okay. So during our budget presentations and our workshop, this was one of the one of the issues that was was brought to light. Um, so I'm I'm throwing it out there. Um, total amount of this article is $200,968. I am going to, um, before we get there, talk about the wording. I think there's some extra words in the beginning of this. To see if the town will vote to appropriate 200,000, whatever the last three digits are. 968. Thanks, 968 from, I believe it's supposed to say from the Pipeline Route 302 Tax Increment Financing District. I believe there's an extra tax increment of the. I could be wrong. You're not wrong. So I think we need to mm -hmm. strike the words. Mm -hmm. Tax increment. Uh, the tax increment. Maybe leave uh, the. <coughs> of. Mm -hmm. So that it would be. Oh, yeah. So that all it would say is from the. <coughs> from the 
pipeline route 302 tax increment so you're going to take out the words the tax increment of mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I'll start on the bus I've thought about this and I think one of the things that we have done in past years is looked for many ways to do joint projects with other towns um, I currently agree with a lot of the comments that were made that you know we're not we as Raymond are not getting ninety six hundred um, dollars <coughs> worth of value um, out of our our monies um, based on our citizens riderships I have I have less concern about the money as part of a multi-town partnership than I have for who's providing the service. Um, I think that RTP in the long run is not a fixed route service provider. They are a um, they are a special transportation provider. Uh, I've been working with a committee that's looking into combining Metro South Portland bus and the Biddeford Saco um, Zoom bus into a single entity and they do fixed route providing. Um, RTP is not part of that kind of consolidation and in fact the only reason this bus exists is because they could get a grant um, to do it and start it and um, which meant they got some management dollars to do it as well. So I guess my feeling is we do all because it's a joint project with our neighbors and we support it and see where it goes or we do nothing because you know it's just not the right provider I think it's you know when the bus is gone they're going to come put their hands out again and say we need to buy another bus and it's it's going to be tremendous and and they are not fixed route providers um, so I kind of go <coughs> I go all or nothing is it help our neighbors or is it protest because it's it's the wrong service deliverer. Um, so those are my comments on the bus. I mean, what bothers me about this bus is that you're paying three dollars whether you take it in Bridgeton or you take it in Raymond or you take it in Westbrook. It makes no sense. It, it, Bridgeton's another 44 miles round trip. They ought to be paying more. I, I just don't get the calculations here. And to ask every town to pay the same amount just doesn't make sense to me. Either. Yeah, right. So I, I'll make a motion that we reduce the article down to $196,312, which would make the Lake Region bus $5,000 that the town supplies, which is the same amount as last year. I would second that. Could you repeat that dollar figure, Jeff? 196312 It's a reduction of 4656 We... Is it open for discussion? Hold on, 196, 5,000 straight off. The, okay, there we go. Thank you. Yep. 196312. 312. Thank you. Teresa? When we had talked about this, I think it was last year, I know I had pushed for it to go one more year just to see if it would pick up or not. You know what I mean? Just kind of let it ride for another year. And I know it was kind of mixed things. And I know it helps some people, and I know it helps the other towns, but. I don't see it going up, so I'm 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 okay with giving some of it, but not all of it. That's what it is. I think the reduction is appropriate in that case. I mean, I'm willing to give it another year, but they have to come up with better solutions to this. <clears throat> if if a town is further away, it should be contributing more to it, and those folks should be paying more. To ride to Portland on three dollars is, yeah. is to steal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So it's nothing. I mean, that's 40 miles one way. So, so this would be we wouldn't we wouldn't um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't the increase time. the support, but we would keep at the same level as last year. Exactly. And one of the interesting things here too is as um, as a service provider, this is this would currently be the only service provider that we fund outside of Raymond. Because we, we we did do away with all service provider funding, yeah. you know, yeah. over the course of the last ten years or so. 
I don't know that I look at it as a service provider. That's I look at it a little differently. Mm -hmm. If it was more professionally managed, uh, further comments. Um, so, Joe, you've amended, and it's been seconded down to this number. Would you also consider adding to your amendment the changes that were made in the wording? I don't think we've done that. I made comments on the wording, but. Sure. I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Thank you. Um, I missed who seconded your motion. Sam. Okay. Sam, are you willing to second the friendly yeah. amendment? So we have a change in the wording for Article 18 and a change in the total amount um, with the funding staying level at last year's amount for the RTP bus. <coughs> Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Unanimous 4-0. Good. Is that a dollar amount you would want to see in the breakdown? above that would, we have there no, i mean i would leave the everything the same except just make that 20968 okay. 196 312 mm -hmm. and the wording change mm -hmm. and just want to make sure all these articles are closed articles so people can't go up on them yes mm -hmm. excuse me <laughs> like having someone stand up in the back of the room going can we make it a million dollars Mm -hmm. We'll only do that on the salary one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Are we ready to continue? Yes, Article 19, please. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $458,426 for the administration account. Make a motion to accept Article 19 as recommended by the selectmen. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Four zero. <clears throat> Article 20, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $56,261 for the assessing account. Mm -hmm. Motion to accept Article 20 is recommended by the selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Four zero. Article 21, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $102,900 for the Code Enforcement Department account. Motion to accept Article 21, as approved by the Selectman. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Article 22, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $23,615 for the Town Hall account. <coughs> Motion to accept Article 22 as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? Um, just Nancy, no <coughs> further word on health insurance right now. Nothing. What did you recommend in this? That, there's no way that's enough. That, I have a real concern with that number. Uh, um, I haven't heard of anyone who's not seen double digits. What would y'all recommend? <laughs> <laughs> so is this under town hall? This no, we no, dead one. We're, not we're insurance, right? No, no we're, we're town hall. We're one ahead, oh. Joe. So we're on 22. Oh, we're, sorry. That's what I'm thinking. I just missed. Okay. We moved and seconded, but mm -hmm. yep. we were, I asked for discussion. You were just, Thanks. you were, oh, you oh. were ready. I'm ready. All right. <laughs> um, all those in favor of Article 22 as motioned. Yep. <laughs> Unanimous, 4-0. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Sue, there was a little He's hiccup in the, in the, in the works there. <laughs> Sue, would you like to read Article 23 about insurance? About insurance, yes. Article 23, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $500,480 for the insurance account. Motion to accept Article 23 is recommended by the selectmen. Second. No. Is there discussion, Joe? Yeah, I... I don't see a 7% increase being sufficient to cover health insurance. Um, Nancy, you have a microphone? Actually, I do. So, so Nancy, last year we budgeted 240 Do you recollect what it came in at? <coughs> it was it less, more? I, I, I don't remember. I think we came in right 
So the 245 would be a 7% would be the actual anticipated number, not, not the number based on last year. Okay. Or last year's budget, not as opposed to last year's real number. Oops. So what Nancy said while she had it muted was that um, the number is an actual number, not based on last year's budget number. So it, in, it includes a 7%. I took last year's rates. You, you and, need a mic. And yeah. increased them by 7%. You might want to come over here to the table. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that is only on your health insurance you did that? You left dental flat? I went up 5% on dental. Okay. So out of this 245, how much is health? Roughly two twenty five. So you could leave the budget number there if it went up another ten percent over the seven percent, it would leave you with a twenty five thousand dollar bill potentially out of selectman contingency if you wanted to do it that way. But that would represent one third of selectman <coughs> contingency if we don't adjust it here well, on this line. But we've also got some new employees this year from last year. But they're part time. Okay. So, all right. So that doesn't like that. So here, if you're at 225 and you went up 7%, you would be at 241. 225 where we are now. Right. And so are you talking about going up another 7%? No. He yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm saying you said your health insurance cost is 225 right now. Right. That, and your dental is what, 20000 It's roughly 24 give or take. Okay. That gets you to 249 right there. That's with the increases, though, Joe. She's, she's at 245 with the projected increases. Oh, seven percent, right? Right. So, so her her two her 225 estimate's probably a little high. Maybe it's 220, but but you've got a seven and a five percent increase on current to get you to 245 for next year. Correct, Nancy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Not on current budgeted, but on rates. current cost rates. Would you rather go in high and then be surprised if it she's budgeted higher than we get money back? Well, the only way you're going to cover it is that a contingency. So you would go another 7% on that 245? I would. <coughs> so you've got your spiffy calculator. What is that number? Well, you only need to do it on your health insurance portion, which was 225, right? Probably. Because you dental, use that as your estimate. Your, yeah. your five percent on dental is more than enough. So it'll be twelve fifty. It, it's another, you know, fifteen thousand dollars on two twenty five. So that would make. It's so basically, you you raise it to two hundred sixty thousand. <coughs> So, you know what, if you go up by 15000 to two sixty, you're right. probably covered. And that would make it 515480, five, yeah. if I'm looking at the right numbers. 515480, five, yep. Um, can you make a motion on that? Do it? Well, you already made a motion, right? But we have to turn that one down. Would you? Oh, you no, no you get I'll make an amendment to increase it by $15,000. Second. Any further discussion on insurance? So the number is 515480. Yeah. Correct. Seeing none, all those in favor? 4 0. Got that, Sue? Mm -hmm. Article 24, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $6,000 for the general assistance account. 
Motion to accept Article 24 as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous, 4-0. Article 25, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $184,271 for the technical Technology Department account. Motion to accept Article 25 as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 4-0. Article 26, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $41,488 for the community development account. Motion to accept Article 26 as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 4-0. Article 27, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $684,221 for the fire rescue department account. Motion to accept Article 27 as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Article 28, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $16,222 for the annual control, of animal control account. Thought we had a new one there. Yeah. I thought we were gonna have a new account. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to accept Article 28 as recommended by the Selectman. <clears throat> Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 4-0. Article 29, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $21,816 for the infrastructure account. Motion to accept Article 29 is recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 30. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $690,790 for the Public Works account. Motion to accept Article 30 is recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 31. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $316,262 for the Solid Waste account. Motion to accept Article 31 is recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 4-0. Article 32. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate $15,841 for the employee compensation and training account. Motion to accept <laughs> Article 32 is recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous, 4-0. Article 33, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $27,164 for the cemeteries account. Motion to accept <coughs> Article 23, 33 <coughs> as recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, Article 34, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $15,788 for the Parks and Recreation account. Included are materials, maintenance and equipment, $2,500. Contract services, $8,688. Raymond Rattler Snowmobile, $1,600. Raymond Baseball Softball, $1,000. Agawa Mowing and Soccer, $2,000. Motion to accept Article 34 is recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Article 35, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $60,500 for the Raymond Village Library. Motion to accept Article 35 is recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Discussion? Teresa. I'm not comfortable going up to the 60000 so I guess I would make a recommendation, Mike, I think off of what you had suggested at our workshop mm -hmm. regarding fundraising, but up to 55000 I think I was a little concerned the other night with with the conversations that we that were coming out just 
You guys are still trying to do a lot of cleanup, it seems, and it's been... Uh, it's about us, Teresa, right here. Oh, sorry. I'm just... I know. I'm talking it's to you. right here. Looking at them. I know. Sorry. <laughs> I'm concerned... Yeah, I was concerned about the conversations. I think the library, before coming in and asking for more money, needs to really figure out what they do have. And I think knowing that they have 102000 in a separate account and they've really dipped into that, I don't think they're really getting to the bottom of what they spend. And I'm not here to micromanage them. I just I just say leave it at 55000 So you would not do what I recommend, what you're suggesting is a flat 5500 so basically 55000 so leave it flat at last year's level. Uh, no, I, I'm okay with what you said, but leave, not going up to the sixty thousand like you recommended. I'm sorry, that was in the budget. I mean, that was in a workshop. I I okay. suggest you drop yours down to fifty five instead of having a cap at sixty thousand, starting at forty two thousand. Where if they meet it at forty two thousand, as far as fundraising goes, up to fifty five thousand. Now I understand. Thank sorry. you. I I got to remember people not watching too aren't um, so getting you, the whole thing. Okay. So you would suggest a guaranteed amount at forty-two thousand, yes, with a cap at fifty-five. Yes. Okay. Other comments. Right now, the motion on the floor is for the full sixty. And I think we just had to have that on there just because we had to open up conversations. Oh, we didn't. You could have. No. No. Can I amend it? No. no. Well, if you well, can try. You, you can withdraw it. <laughs> I, I, I withdraw the motion of accepting Article Thirty-Five at sixty thousand five hundred. I thought we had to have it on there to open it up. So I'm withdrawing that motion. Is there a second? To the withdrawal? Hmm. Do you oh, need a second? No. Yeah. Oh, those you, you actually don't need it. All those in favor of the withdrawal? <laughs> Opposed? Sorry. Three to one. Okay. So is there a motion on the table for further dis future discussion? Not yet. What do you mean future discussion? Like we're discussing it now, correct? Well, you no. have to we can't make now. a motion. Can I have on a, the article. I'm making a motion to have further discuss, future discussion. You can't. Okay. You need I'll, I'll make so, a motion, and this is my motion. Oh my God. To, okay, to recommend uh, $56,500, which is a 2% increase in their appropriation from last year and the $500 maintenance. Give us that number one more time. It will be $56,500. That's a 2%? That's a 2% increase in their donation and then keep the $500 maintenance. <clears throat> there a second? Thinking about it. <clears throat> Seeing none, motion does not move forward. May I make a motion? You may. I make a motion to keep it at the uh, number on the paper, $60,500. $60,500 and recommended by the selectmen. Is there a second? Seeing none, that motion does not move forward. I'll so, try. <laughs> My turn, Teresa. All right, go, Mike. Um, I've thought a lot about this since our workshop, listened to a lot of words. I was coming in tonight with a recommendation of 47500 guaranteed with the opportunity to make up to 60, only matched with cash contributions. So they would have to match up to 60000 To get 60000 they get a guarantee of 47500 They need to fundraise. If I remember their budget, it's in front of me here. They only raised 30, less than 38 this year, right? Because that's what, that was their goal. They're probably on their way to 42, 43. I um, ba based on our Based on the, our conversations, they're, they're anticipating 42, 43. But I heard a lot of folks wanting to support them more than that. So I was willing to go up five thousand dollars on my original conversation that I had, which would bring it to forty-seven thousand five hundred, with the ability to make up to sixty, which would match their one hundred and twenty thousand dollar anticipated expense and revenue. So if we give them sixty and they raise sixty, they've made, they've matched their one twenty. 
Is this I, I, as I said, are we at discussion though? Yeah. No, nobody, nobody yeah. seconded it nobody yet. Nobody yeah. seconded that motion yet. <laughs> I was just trying to explain it. <clears throat> that motion does not carry. Is there another motion? I'm going to try can this I, one. Can I, what was your number, Joe? 56.5. I make a recommendation or a motion that we uh, recommend 56.5. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Teresa, now you can discuss. Yeah. Um, what what about how do you guys feel as far as I know the money they have to do for construction on their building <clears throat> and I and I must the way I'm taking this money is this is for some of those repairs so if we knock it back down to the 55,000 and give them a loan th is that where this fits into this you would need a separate warrant article yes you would yeah so okay so all right, explain this to me. So um, I'm, I'm going to comment before I explain it. Okay. I don't care what they spend the money on. No. That's really not our business, to be honest with you. I, I, just, I just personally. Well, it, it's, not, it's not a matter of business. It's a matter of trying to say, okay, if they need that extra money for that, I'm trying to figure another way to get it. It's what it is. I'm not here to micromanaging. Get it. Exactly. So I'm not here to micromanage them. So just so we're understood. They could get a very low interest loan with the amount of money they have in the bank okay. as a guarantee. Yes. So right now you can get a commercial loan at under three percent okay and it's or under four percent sorry it's clarification too so yeah I don't think they'd have trouble get borrowing that money on a short-term basis like that if they if they needed to motion and seconded correct motion and second we're discussing stop oh you want to stop <laughs> discussing that's what you want you want to move the question is that what you're saying any further discussion all those in favor Three to one. Fifty-six five. Fifty-six right. five. So we need a new Article Thirty-five, right? No. Nope. To put the new number in there. No, that's what we just did. We oh, just okay. moved. We just motioned it at that at that level. Okay. So that's a decrease in what's on our budget sheet 4, of four thousand dollars. I think I caught up. Article 36, to see whether the town will vote to carry forward any existing fund balance in the capital improvement program account. Motion to accept Article 36 as recommended by the select line. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Article 37, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate nine hundred eighty six thousand seven hundred seventy two dollars for the capital improvement account included our public works equipment reserve eighty five thousand two two thousand thirteen public works road construction bond payment two hundred and thirty six thousand public works paving road reserve two hundred seventy five thousand municipal facilities maintenance improvements twenty five thousand 2002 PSB bond payment 110,772 fire department equipment facilities 150,000 bond payment for fire truck salt oh, I'm sorry sand salt salt shed 105,000 make a motion to recommend article 37 second any discussion all those in favor Article 38, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $676,263 for the county tax account. Motion to accept Article 38 is recommended by the selectmen. Second. All those in favor? Opposed. 4-0. I think that's the first year in a long time that vote's been 4-0. Cool. I think there's always usually one person, myself, who votes against it, but I didn't this year. Article 39, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the total sum of $1,625,579 from estimated non-property tax revenues to reduce the property tax commitment together with all categories of funds which may be available from the federal government and any other sources. Motion to accept Article 39 is recommended by the selectmen. 
Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 40, to see if the town will vote to authorize the selectmen to accept or reject grants, donations, and or gifts of money to the town of Raymond and to expend monies donated for specific purposes. Motion to accept Article 40 is recommended by the selectmen. One second. Thanks. Any discussion? Are those pro, pro, all those in favor? <coughs> Thank you. Unanimous. What did she do different on that font? I'm going to ask that jump in there. I'm telling you, this is full. That's it's totally different for 41 for us now from the rest of them. Yeah. Cool. I think, yeah, there's a, there was an errant pinky somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, look how easy that is to read. Do you want me to read now? <laughs> You'd like to. No, you go right ahead. You're doing a great job. Article 41, to see if the town will vote to accept certain state funds as provided by the Maine State Legislature during the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2016, and any other funds provided by any other entity included, but not limited to, municipal revenue sharing, local road assistance, emergency management assistance, snowmobile registration money, tree growth reimbursement, general assistance reimbursement, Veterans Exemption Reimbursement, State Grant, or other funds. Motion to accept Article 41 is recommended by the Selectmen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? You can pick a second, Sue. <laughs> it was a tie. I did. Bruno's short at his type. Oh. <laughs> Article 42, to see if the town will vote to appropriate $6,800 from the Open Space Reserve Fund to be used for the purchase of property for the Raymond Community Forest by the Loon Echo Land Trust. Motion to accept Article 42 is recommended by the Selectmen. I'll second that. Discussion? Yeah, I'm not sure the Selectmen should make a recommendation. No, I don't either. Yeah. I think it's up to the town to decide if they want to do this. <clears throat> I think a couple years ago we, um, we did the same thing. We put the Warren article on and the we said that selectmen make no recommendation because right. mm -hmm. because we it came uh, one of the reasons is it came to us so late then as well as a request and we didn't know how the townspeople felt we had not had a public hearing um, I'm comf comfortable with that recommendation as well yep well you'll need to have a withdrawal or an amendment I make an amendment to article 42 to have no recommendation by the selectmen you accept article 42 and make no recommendation by the selectmen I'm gonna have you start reading is there a second? Second. As amended by Joe Bruno, seconded by SADAC. <laughs> Honestly. Just trying to make it clear. <laughs> Sue's going to put what she wants anyway over yeah. there. I'm letting her catch up for a second because I know there's a lot to type there. So. All those in favor? No, she's reading it. <laughs> Unanimous 4 0. So I'm guessing that Article 43 is a, is here because of the new the new way we do things. Yes, to, it's yeah. because of a bifurcated meeting, and it isn't required that you. It doesn't really matter if right. you want to accept it or not. Quite literally. So we won't. But, <coughs> um, <laughs> I, but I. You need am, to read it. Oh. So that I, we can we can actually put it on there. Oh, or, or I don't that, have it. So. Article 43, yeah. mm -hmm. to elect two, the number two. Selectmen for three year terms. Three, the number three, members for the Budget Finance Committee for three year terms. And one, the number one, member for the RSU School Board of Directors for a three year term. I'm not doing it. <laughs> you do that one. Make a motion to accept Article 43 as written. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, could I ask a question back on Article 42? Back on Article 42, yes. Um, after I write second by Sam approved. Thank you. Um, how do you want anything, if anything, to read under the article in the uh, book? In years past, no recommendation by the selectmen, the or just selectmen leave it make blank. No recommendation. Right. Okay. So no, just do put <coughs> the selectmen say no recommendation. Okay. The selectmen may. I think that's make the way. No it, recommendation. Make no. Yes. That's mm -hmm. the way it was. I think if you look in a past one, you'll see mm -hmm. the, the wording. But well, I wasn't sure if you just wanted nothing there. No. Or, okay. And that allows towns to ask us why, and we can tell them. Mm -hmm. You can tell. Them. I get to tell them. Oh joy! I think I told them last time too. Mm -hmm. 
Sue, are we good on the budget warrant to your satisfaction at this point? Yes. And I will mess with the phone. You saw yes, it? I really think you yeah. did a poll. Or something. But anyway, it'll be it'll be I easy to that way. I have a copy of it in front of me that's you, not bold. in Word. But do you see the bold. difference on yours? Do you, did it show the difference as far as type goes on your computer? Did the public make a comment? I think what's happening is there's a printer font that's not resident. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I bet uh, Kevin can take care of it. Right? Except I used Arial. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Do you want do you want to see it on my computer so you can see it? It's all right. It's, it doesn't matter. Yeah, at, she'll figure the meeting, it out. Okay. You can actually see it right on here, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That takes care of uh, consideration and review of fiscal year 16-17 budget. Fiscal. 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 Thank you. Fiscal. Yeah. Fiscal. Mm -hmm. Is that an Olivia Newton-John song? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get a fiscal. Yes. <laughs> there we are. All right. Next item on the agenda is um, classification and compensation study implementation discussion and approval, if we desire, of the concept and then an authorization to develop the program. So we had a workshop and a presentation from our consultant on the merit pay system. Um, during that workshop, we asked a lot of questions. I think we, we had a lot of questions still to answer. Um, so I put this on here tonight so that we could decide whether or not we want to move ahead with the program basically as presented and let staff figure out how to implement it with the goal being that they would start the implementation this year um, and take a year under the new program before um, any changes would be done to um, salaries or things of that nature. Um, and it would give staff an opportunity to have training um, and things of that nature. Don, do you want to give further outline? I would just say, except for what's already planned within the budget, you know, so there are some changes planned mm -hmm. within the budget. And so, so I think we're ready to go ahead and, and develop the program. I, I did have an email that I put in your package from Don Tyler, which uh, did you get a chance to look at that? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, some some guidance in a couple of areas would be would be helpful for us. You know, specifically the he came up with market averages by position, and so, you know, I, I guess we would need some guidance around that. Uh, to develop a program would be one of one of the questions. Do you like the, the concept of, you know, the the midpoint and then uh, the treatment of employees, uh, based on attainment of that that midpoint, and uh, with respect to their eligibility for merit pay, uh, presently and in the future. So is is that where we want to shoot for? Do we want to shoot below the midpoint, above the midpoint? You know, we have to have some sort of a, I guess a baseline to to figure to. Because keep in mind, it's going to change because we're going to hopefully be updating it every year. We'll be looking at that same survey group of towns every year, and so so the, the data will change somewhat year to year. So, as a philosophy, where do you want to be? Do you want to <coughs> with your program, Joe? I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I am not in favor of just automatically going to 100 percent for everybody at the median. To me, that 100 percent of the median. Well, I mean, that's what you're saying. Right? You're He's saying 100 percent of the weighted the weighted. Well, I'm saying average. once you get to 100 percent, then right. you know I think what he I can read his email. Would you let me do that? Would that be better? No, because it's right in front of us. Yeah. But I'm saying for the folks <coughs> who don't have it, but no, it's okay. No, and what you're trying to achieve is that you are competitive in your pay and benefits. Competition doesn't always mean while well, I'm at the average. That's not. Some people deserve above that median, and some, you know, if you're within 5%, you're competitive. That's, that's the way I look at it. I, you know. so, so, so you don't want to set that criteria into any kind of, um, to codify that. You want to look at that data and make an, you know, understand what that is, but set up a program that's, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure this out and yeah. going, but set up a program that's based uh, on merit you know, by individual, and just one of the factors you look at is those ranges that you have annually. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want to say you don't. I, I'm say. I'm like, for for me, a competitive pay scale is anywhere from 
five percent below to five percent above anywhere within that ten percent range to me is a competitive pay because it's never an apples to apples <coughs> comparison on these things because you have to take into account working conditions you have to take into account um, the benefit structure all those things have to be factored in in order to do an apples to apples comparison if you're solely looking at pay a 10 percent spread either way you know five percent either way is competitive so I think that gives us what we're looking for. So what you, if I'm understanding... That, this is my fault. No, I'm just saying, though, if, we, if you go with that theory, if you went with that theory, um, then we wouldn't be, you know, and I'm not saying we're, we're doing that. We just have to have some sort of bench, benchmark. But so as long as you're within that 10% 10 spread, five below, five above, um, the pay would be considered to be competitive. With respect to merit, and this is following up on what I think you said at the meeting, once you exceed the 105 percent, you would be not eligible for merit. I mean, is, is that correct? No. Not in my thinking. I think okay. you, I think when but, you, well, when I, you I, I guess I think when you go through training, you'll get a better grasp of the range system. Okay. Um, I don't think there's any 100 percent. I mean, I think what Joe's saying is it's competitive. So. If somebody's asking you for a raise under a, a, a merit pay system, if you think they're going to leave because they're not at a competitive wage, that's where you use that number. Okay. I see this study as everybody has been placed in a range so that when you start on July 1, 2016, everybody has been placed within a a, a range of jobs and they've got to pay within that range they are then evaluated on their job performance not necessarily against the range okay okay you're you're not you're not going to say you get a merit pay increase because you're not at 100 percent yet you only get a merit pay increase if you deserve one okay all right if a, if a department head decides that they're going to give everybody in the department 1% and then give merits, that's the department head's choice. If the department head says, nobody in my department deserves a raise this year, that's part of what you discuss. It, it, it's not about the scale. It's about performance within, within the person in the department is the way I see it. Okay. The scales are there to identify that if somebody does outstanding work year after year after year, there is a top threshold that you can bump up against. And at that point, if, if you are at the absolute top of the, of the scale and you do an outstanding job, you still may not get a raise because the job doesn't pay that. But that would be the, so that would be the, that within that 10% threshold, that would be the upper threshold. Correct. I understand it now. And I don't think you can have a policy of a median because that just brings you right back to your municipal, yeah. everybody gets a raise because you're not at the 100% yet. And, and this idea that you're going to do a, a survey every year, you, you have your baseline now. You probably won't want to do another survey for five years <coughs> because you have a baseline that where everybody is right now. And then you go from there and then check in and three years, five years, and say, okay, am I still in the ballpark? Well, you, you won't be, because the rest of the world is going to move forward at a pace of a cola. They might. They might. Th they are. Well, they might. And so maybe three years from now. So it, 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 let me get this right. In municipal government, everybody just gets a raise every year, no matter what. Typically in municipal government so and, and when and we have a recession, you're going to give raises? Haven't well, we had recessions where we have not given raises? The answer to that is yes. And, uh, but on average, the, the way that pay is adjusted in the municipal world, in the school world, is, is an annual COLA on average. And so all I'm saying is that following up on what you're saying, you know, you're just establishing these parameters, which don't mean under your system that you're going to get a raise, because now we've gone away from the, the COLA entitlement kind of system to a merit-based system, which means you may or may not get one. It may or may not be of... A, a certain size or not, but I think that if you don't, and, and Don Tyler actually recommended this on an annual basis, you can have him do it or, or staff can do it, it's not a big deal, but if you don't keep you know, your, your scales to be 
I guess, consistent with your marketplace. And, and I don't think five years, five years is a long time. If you, if you just let that scale set for five years, that's apt to put you out of whack because everybody else in, the, in your competitor class of employers is going to increase by the COLA, by a COLA, by a, by a CPI COLA each year. So in five years, you're 10% out, probably. You might be. At which point, you'll ask the board to say we should adjust the pay scales and the board may or may not do that or the board may say something different. I so mean, you don't it, think it, that municipal governments ever cap what they pay? You think, so, like, oh. I'm not picking on anyone here, but someone working at the window over there is going to be up to $30 an hour at some point? No. I mean, that's under your philosophy, that's what well, happens. Well, well, at 2% or 0.6% a year, that isn't going to happen very quickly, no. Well, but it might happen. Well, in, okay, in you minute. have runaway inflation. You have a 4% COLA every year. Do you think someone's going to, you know, working the counter is going to be paying $30 an hour? Because that's yeah, what all, all, I'm, all I'm saying is what the consultant said, which is it's important to keep the scales, you know, if you're, comparing, if you're comparing for your labor market, which is what we did, we decided that we weren't going to, you know, look at any, any other, there's all kinds of different cuts you can make for comparables, but we decided regional labor market. So he, he says it's important to look at that on an annual basis and, and look at where you lie within that system. That doesn't mean you get a raise or not. That just shows you where you are with respect to your competitor communities. And so that's all I'm saying. That, that would basically keep you in a COLA situation, which yeah. is what this system that's is much, trying to get away from. Yeah, you might as well not even bother doing this and take $15,000 out for training because what you're saying is you're going to give everybody raises every year anyway. I'm not saying that. Well, yeah, you are. No, I'm you're not saying, saying that. I'm you're saying, saying every town around us is going to be given a COLA. Therefore, we're going to lag, and we're going to need to raise everybody's salary to be competitive. I'm saying that knowledge is power, and to know where you lie within your labor market is useful information. That doesn't necessarily relate back to a automatic increase. You've said you don't want automatic increases. We're not going to do automatic increases. It's going to be strictly merit, and it's going to be limited by the amount of money that is available. And so there are going to be a system where some people are going to get raises, some people aren't going to get raises. You just determine that you don't want to strive for an average, because that would be, you know, something I guess consistent with having a cola. I understand that point. So I'm just suggesting that, and I guess if if you want to say you don't want to look at it for five years, I guess that that would be your decision. My concern would be that that data is going to be, and you're going to be, it's going to be pretty stale in five years. That's all I'm saying, but I, but I don't think well, it's going to guarantee. Well, your philosophy, Don, we might as well not do this, because it doesn't make sense to waste the money to train someone. I don't think I'm getting across what I'm trying to say. No, I, no, I'm totally I'm, understanding you. You're saying you need to keep competitive, and your idea of competitive is that you should be my idea of where those people my, get paid. I'm saying that it's important to know where you are in your labor market, and the way you know where you are in your labor market is to know what the people around you are doing. Exactly. Well. But that doesn't necessarily relate really back to. That? But that doesn't. I mean, you go to all these meetings, you don't get a sense that what people are getting paid. I actually don't. In terms of, I don't know what each town in that group. Some of those towns I don't have contact with. They're they're more western main towns. Some are more suburban towns. I don't. I don't know. I know probably what the two or three towns around me do, but I don't know what the, what those, you know, ten or eleven towns do every year. But the competitive market changes every year. If you, it depends whether you're in a recession, people are unemployed, you can hire someone for a lot less. I mean, that's competition. That's what it's all about. I can tell you that the pharmacist wage scale has dropped by 40% over the last five years. Dropped. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get what you, what you folks want. I'm, I guess I, and I, made, I know it's hard for you. Well, well I, made, I made the, this is not a point that comes from Don, this point came from the consultant. But, so I'm just telling you what he said, but if you want to design it in a different way, that's good with me. I'll make it happen. I'll make it successful. That's, we want to kick it off and, and make sure we get it the way you want it. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm just making the point that, that was made at the meeting and, and trying to get some direction is all. I think, I think you and your staff have to decide where that, that number is, you know, plus five, minus five. I mean, you're, you're going to pick what is Raymond. 
right? You, you know what the, you, you've been given a set of data, you and the consultant as part of the training are gonna pick a point, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's on, the, on, the, yeah. on that. It's not for us to pick. I think I'm. I think I'm not making myself. I don't think I'm being understood as to what I want. What I'm trying to say. I'm saying that you have the data, so you know where you are. But it, the data doesn't relate back to the merit in any way. So you, you just. That's just something. That's just one. One thing you have. One tool you have. But because we have this, you know, this this range, and we're not going to stick to absolute averages or or medians or anything. We're going to start where we are, and we're going to do it on a strict merit basis after we get the training. But we're not going to pay a great deal of attention about to that to that data. You know, trying to meet meet a midpoint or meet a spe specific place on it, five below, five above, the middle. We don't care about any of that. We know that the pay is you know compare competitive. I think for the most of our employees, and we're going to look at them strictly on a merit basis and award the increase based on performance under the program that he's going to train us on. So, so we're not going to be married to this uh, scale. But the, the only point I'm making about the scale is that it, it's it's something you probably want to keep updated so you don't end up as we were. You know, when I came here years ago, we were way off the scale the wrong way. I don't think this board or any future board is going to allow that scale to get so out of date that it's not usable. Um, and knowing where you are now gives you the decision, the, the ability to make the decisions you're asking us for. Um, I think once you go through the training, you're going to learn a lot. Staff is going to get together. And then if you have further questions after that, if you need clarification, I think you're going to have to come back or you're, we'll have a workshop or something along those lines. But I don't think we can answer your questions until you've had a better, until you, you and everybody else gets a better understanding of the program as he's going to train you in it. I, and I, I don't do think I need need any more guidance, actually, because what my question was, you know, was exactly what you what you th think I was asking is, you know, is, is there some sort of place that we want to be at? And the answer is no. We want to be competitive within a within a pretty wide band, and we want to pay on merit. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, one of the so I get it. I think I get it. One of the prime indicators of whether or not you're competitive is is what's your turnover. <coughs> what's your employee turnover? Are people leaving to go get more money in another town? No, but I, I'm not sure that that's... And I, that's an indicator. That's an indicator, but I'm not sure that's the place we want to be. Well, I'm not saying that's where you want to be either. But it's not like you have a mass exodus of employees. No, we, don't. we don't, no. Right. That's because you're competitive in both pay and benefits and working conditions. You have to look at it that way. If people start leaving left and right, and then you have to go back and go, okay, why are people leaving? Maybe it's me as the town manager. They don't like working for me, or they don't like the select board, or they, you know, something's wrong. But one of the prime indicators is whether or not you're competitive is how much turnover do I have? And are people leaving for salary reasons? Yeah, so I, I think that is a valid tool, just like, you know, knowing where you are in, the, in, the, in your group is a tool, is a number of tools. But what we're saying is that we want to be innovative and different, and we want to have a system based on merit, measured by you know individual performance and goal setting, and that's what Don's going to help us set up. I actually think I have what I need to move forward. Okay. I don't think I, I need. I think I got the answer, the question answered that I need, the, and uh, and I and and we're not going to tie the system to some kind of survey we're doing every year. That's 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 not what I'm asking. So. At this point, my recommendation would be a motion to move forward with the program as outlined in our workshop, well, get, get the training started. And you already move in a Warren article for $15,000 in training, isn't that a, a, an indication that you're moving forward? Some of that training is for other stuff. It's, that's not Five. all, that's not all, right, that's not all this, but no, we, we had a workshop. Yeah. We haven't approved this, which is a major train change for staff to to um, do, and so I was hoping tonight to get a motion to officially adopt moving fro moving forward with this program with a merit pay program. With a merit pay program, I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Any further discussion? <laughs> Questions? Don. So how this will work? How I think this will work is. 
so we'll have the increases that we have that are set in the budget for certain positions. And okay, so this year I did kind of use that benchmark, but people who are at 100%, I didn't didn't put anything in the budget, 100% or greater, and that includes the bulk of the employees. So there are some employees who are going to get a 0.6% increase. There are an employee or two who are going to get an increase based on a, a change in duties. The rest of the employees are going to, you know, during this year, we're going to get the department heads the training. We're going to train the uh, individual employees so that they understand what the system is. And then come next year, we'll propose a pool of money and, uh, you know, a, a, a dollar certain, not by individual, but by, you know, some, some system. Here's the amount of money that we want for our merit system. And uh, it won't be tied to any individual, you know, manager or any individual employee. And then there'll be, um, you know, the reviews completed and we'll be ready to make our first <coughs> awards in July of 17 based solely on merit and it won't be consistent between employees. It will be based on performance of individual goals and ratings against those goals. That's the system. Yeah. In a nutshell, I mean, we have to design the, the right. fine points of it, but so there'll just be a, a pool of money that will be presented for the budget and when it gets approved through the system, we will already have done the reviews and be ready to make the awards come fiscal year. Sounds pretty good. That's it. With whatever tweaks you need to make yeah. as no, you, I think as you I think learn. It's, I think it's going to be good. I, I think, uh, you know, Don Tyler, he's ready to go. I think I have what I need. We're ready to go. All those in favor? Unanimous, 4-0. So this, this item of merit pay completes what's been talked about here in town for maybe 10 years. Um, it, it follows up on the compensation study that was done by a combination of select board, budget committee, and citizens um, three or four years ago to get to this eventuality. And, and now, now I think the hard work begins. Um, and, and Don, make sure that as, as you go through stuff that if there are questions um, that, it's, that, um, that you ask them to make sure that we can help with this transition as much as possible. But it is, it is a lot of work to do in the next, the next uh, 12 to 14 months um, and, and beyond. Right. So it is a whole change of philosophy. Thank you all. Um, item C on the agenda tonight, um, after we posted the agenda, um, we realized that um, we needed to table this till next month, so I'm asking that this be tabled um, till May meeting. Make a motion to table. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Item D, um, we had a vote last month to um, execute uh, a possible land, uh, execute a wasn't a land sale, it was an auction, auction for land. Um, our lawyer looked at our wording for our motion and had some different wording they would like approved tonight. Sue, do you have that wording? I don't have that in my packet. No, it wasn't that. Motion to grant authority to town, town manager Willard to execute the CMP land sale auction. Execute was what was missing. Was that I think it said to work with the CMP or we work had with to the work attorney. With and execute was what the. What was missing was execute. Mm -hmm. I would make a motion based on the wording provided by our legal counsel. Second. All those in favor? They're unanimous. Thank you. Next item biannual appointment of election workers. Sue, I believe this is your item. It is. The, uh, I don't believe this has been done in Raymond in the past, um, that it's been, it was a preference of the prior clerk to appoint cl clerks with every election. But under the law, we, I can't appoint for a two-year period. Um, any, if I needed to add anyone, I would need to bring them to you before the next election. Uh, but that's a new list. The Democrats were kind enough to give me oh, oh, not quite 10 names of new folks for the list. The Republicans didn't quite get that 
they forgot to do it literally at their caucus. So that's the list. Can I ask you, mm -hmm. so if I may, Mr. Go right ahead. why we have unenrolled people on the list? I can use unenrolled. I have to keep the a um, balance of Republican parties, and, Democrats. and I can't have more than one different between the two. Uh, yeah. But the un but the unenrolled can be used. I try I I try to never use them on the list. I try to never use them counting, but they can be used to uh, package up ballots, to sort absentee materials, to um, be those floater back and forth to make sure that ba the folks at the tables have. Um, well, it used to be that mm -hmm. town committees would have to give you recommendations of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, mm -hmm. and it had to come out of a party. It was never an unenrolled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the law uh, was changed. To, it was before I became clerk the first time that unenrolled can yeah. be. Mm -hmm. I try not to. I try and fill. I've only used unenrolled a couple of times. There's only one. There's one woman that wants to work every time that comes. And mm -hmm. she generally helps pick up, take down posters, things of that nature. Anything dealing with the ballots, I always keep with a Democrat and a Republican. Always. Further questions of Sue on the appointments of election officials? All those in favor? It's unanimous. So here is the signatory for the elected officials. Is that the elected officials, or is that Louise Murray's and warden? <coughs> That's the warden here. Yeah. Nope. Louise Murray is the warden? Uh, I mean, Louise. I hope oh, it says Sue Carr. Oh, Sue Carr. That's sorry. <laughs> Sue Carr, I mean, yes. Going from memory. Yeah. So Lu I had a flashback. <laughs> Louise has moved. So Sue's next item is to appoint Sue Carr as the election warden. Isn't that Correct? what was signed? No, I, I switched it. That's oh. the one for the elected <laughs> officers. This is the one for Sue Carr yes, here. Just mm -hmm. So I need a motion to approve Susan M. Carr as the warden for the June fourteenth election. No, no, Mike. This is the Sue Carr one. This is the election warden. Okay, so we still That's the okay, so one. Okay. Since we've already signed it, I'll make so it. Well, well, there should no, be. No, you haven't. No, Sue Cars, we haven't signed. I think what you signed was the um, warrant article. Yeah, there's also the warrant article. Uh, the signature. Uh, and there's also a liquor license. I right. have the liquor license, but here's the thing. Okay. I got them all. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Mm -hmm. Little sticky nose. I'm not that sharp. Oh. <laughs> we figured it out. Mm -hmm. We got them all. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. There you go. This one, this one so I made a second. motion to approve the car as a warden. Is there a I second it, All in favor? Thank you, Joe. So what you signed first was the warrants for the for the um, mm -hmm. for the town meeting. Mm -hmm. This is for the liquor license from earlier. Four of them, Sue? You expected Pardon? signatures on four pieces of paper this evening? Great. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have four pieces of paper That's circulating. That's wonderful. We have one more coming, Don. <laughs> this one. Oh, okay. This one in the back. Oh, yes, four. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. thanks to yeah. Joe. Yeah, mine's going to be the only signature you can read. I'm going to read mine. Yours is scribble. I know. I need to read it. <laughs> it's the same scribble every time, according exactly. to the Secretary of State. Is that correct? That, that is correct. correct. Yep. Four. Four. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Next item on the agenda tonight is public comment. Anybody in the public want to comment? <laughs> Next item is selectman comment. Anybody this evening? Really? Teresa? Yeah. Why are you sitting down here? Nope, I'm good. Anybody else? Town manager comment. Now I know we're going to hear something now. I know. Um, let's see. I got some some basic stuff here. We've got the uh, confirmed dates for upcoming regular meetings: uh, May 10th, uh, June 21st, July 12th, 
or in the alternative, if you want to follow the schedule you did last year, September 13th. With no July and no August. Correct. Well, it says September 12th. So May 10th. May 10th, June 21st, July 12th, or September 13th, your cho choice. Well, I suppose you could pick an August date up as we well. Yeah, May 10th. Why are we meeting in June again? Because I knew that was coming. There are always decisions that have to happen at the end of the year, like carry forwards and things of that nature. So carry forwards on what? Pardon? Budget carry forward? Yes. Yeah. Request for carry forward for, for anything that could be Why carried forward. Is one, is one piece, but there are always fiscal year end decisions that <clears> need <throat> to happen that the down staff needs. So that's June twenty first is what you're recommending. Yes. The so prior two Tuesdays are taken up by town meeting and the election. <laughs> the question really is, do Please you want to take the summer schedule you did last year or something like that or, or not? They're, they're still deciding on June 21st before mm -hmm. we get to August and in We have quick meetings. We can get in and get out. That's where you'll elect your new, your new chair. Mm -hmm. You'll welcome the person who wins the election the week before. Persons. Persons. Because town elections are the 14th. Yep. That's where Sue will swear people in. Yes. Have we ever thought about moving our meetings Didn't we already? earlier? I said that tonight. I said, God, 7 o'clock seems so late. Can we do them 6 30? We can do that. That can be something that the board chooses to do. I think you should take that up on June 21st. I knew that was good. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you should add that to the queue for June 21st. Yeah, that was 5 30. You want to move those to? Uh, yeah, I'm six. thinking like 6. You can make it an agenda item for that mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah. Look at Mike with a smirk on his face. <laughs> I'm off of that. So we're good with the, the 21st of June and the 10th of May to start with? Good. We're good with those two dates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, would the board like to continue its August and July recess? I would like to do that. I'm not going to be gone a lot of July, so. July and August? That's what we and did last year. August, you betcha. I think we should have a July or August one. So September. I'm going to put the third date on here. The other thing you can do. September 13th. Tuesday, September 13th will be the third meeting out from this one to put on your schedule. I, I don't think it should be third one. You don't know what comes up, you know? Okay. There will be no meeting in, at all scheduled after June. Well, I mean... I think at the June meeting you have to decide whether or not it's feasible. Whether we well, have what I was something suggest that has to be done before. before. Right. You could you could adopt yeah. the schedule tentatively, and then we could look at that and make sure we can June. do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not putting September on my calendar right, right. now. Because okay. I think the intent of this was to look forward and see if calendars were available, mm -hmm. as opposed to a hard and fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, my age, I don't even put August on my calendar. <laughs> Are they put next week? <laughs> Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the budget committee done is Monday, Monday. the eleventh. Um six thirty, so? Yep. Six thirty. Yes, six thirty. What else you got for us, Don? Oh, okay. R reminder of upcoming election schedule. May second. Um Monday, nomination papers due to the town clerk by 4 p.m. May 25th, RSU budget vote at 6.30 p.m. at Wyndham High School. June 7th, annual open town meeting at 6.30 p.m. at Jordan Small Middle School. June 14th, annual town meeting reconvened for elections and state election from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Jordan Small Middle School. Reminder of upcoming holiday schedule, April 18th, a Monday, Patriots Day. You guys are close anyway, so. It's a holiday for me. Mm -hmm. Run the marathon, then? No, no. But I'm, uh, I'm here on Mondays. <laughs> so does that mean that Maine gets a deferral on taxes till the 17th this year? Yes. Wow. Until the 19th. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Till the 19th? That'd be till the 17th. Right? Tax day is the 15th, which is a, a wait. Friday. It's a Friday. Uh -huh. yeah, I thought you got to pay my time this year. So I have one other thing. Oh, so it doesn't get deferred. Yes, Don? The one other thing, I, I did try to send you from my phone a picture of the sand salt shed. It's coming along nicely. Tomorrow, assuming that we have the mounting bolts, which is very important, the mounting bolts in the correct, not we, as in Nathan and me, but the, the concrete contractor has them in the correct laser um, placed position, then we will literally pour the walls in concrete and they'll have to be right. So that'll make the, the anchoring points for the building uh, permanent and then we'll be ready to start putting the building up. Good news. Yep, it's going along very well. Yeah. <laughs> Teresa, are you doing the treasurer's warrant this evening? Yeah. Motion to accept the treasurer's warrant and amount of $222,065.32. Second. Second. All those in favor? I did want to make a motion, uh, a mention while we're signing that, that tonight's budget um, discussion and changes added a total of six thousand dollars to the budget there were there were positives and negatives um, suggested but the the net difference is a is a increase of six thousand dollars by my math and that's still kind of up in the air anyways because we're all uh, depends on the insurance numbers that come back no that's no, what, that's no, that's, no but i mean it's going to go up but we may not that's it use that though we may not use it right. but but that's the that's the number that's going to town meeting okay Motion to still, adjourn. And that still puts us in very good shape relative to last year's Motion budget. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you all. <laughs>